Harry Bogart is here in Smash, and that means new balance patches. Looks like Nintendo's pulling the nerf pad out of the closet again. Wait, you mean no one got nerfed in 6.0? Oh, come on! <sighs> Fine. We're taking things into our own hands. We're going to figure out and go over who should be nerfed. But just who should be nerfed? With the help of our subscribers and viewing community, that's you guys, we found three characters that could be toned down a notch. And if you're looking to buff your own play, then head over to ProGuides.com. We've got lots of tools to help you out, like courses from pros, live coaching sessions, and more. Sure, we've had our pro course with Zero for quite a while now, and it's definitely a must-see, but did you know we have pro courses with MK Leo and Esam now too? Especially without nerfs to Joker and Pikachu, this is a great time to learn more on those matchups straight from the pros themselves. A little bit ago, we asked you guys here on our YouTube community page, and we looked into it ourselves and found three strong characters that are good contenders for nerfs. We also found that most of you guys would prefer Nintendo buff weak characters than nerf strong ones, so I'm sure you're all loving patch 6.0 right now. It's hard to know if any character in the game really needs a nerf, but these three characters often come up when we're talking about overpowered abilities. We're going to break down just what makes these characters so strong and some potential ways to nerf them. To assess strength, we're going to be looking at a mix of results and gameplay. And to assess how to nerf them properly, we're going to think about nerfs as having three goals. A nerf should make the game more fun to play, make the game more fun to watch, and make the game more balanced, obviously. So that means you don't want to hard nerf the hype parts of a character's kit. You also want to nerf to take away some of the character's oppressiveness and make them less miserable to face. And finally, you want the nerf to hurt the character, but not necessarily so much that they drop a full tier. Though, Snake and Palu, some of you probably want to see them nerfed into the land of Little Max and Kirby's. But let's put that salt aside and think about respectful nerfs for even the most disrespectful characters. First up on the chopping block is Joker. Joker was the character you guys mentioned most, and it makes sense because he's absolutely one of the best in the game. With Tweak and Zachary picking up the character, there's just no getting around denying it anymore. Joker's pretty much got it all. You want results? Joker's got those. Whether it's MKLeo or Tweak or Zachary, Joker is basically a feature of top 8s now. It's gotten to the point where players are switching mains like it's late Smash 4. No, no, please, not the ladder combo! <clears throat> Sorry, I just, I, I thought we were past this. As I was saying, you want good tech and gameplay? Joker's got that too. He has some of the best edge guarding in the game with tools like back air and down air. He's got a super solid, useful projectile. He's fast on the ground and in the air, all while being a surprisingly durable middleweight. His gun special's downward usage makes it pretty tough to punish his landing. His drag downs give him huge kill potential in the right hands. His counter may be the best in a game that's got like 50 of them. His recovery is good, his tilts are good, his dash attack is good, and we haven't even talked about our Sen. Joker is the anime protagonist of Smash, and all those mid-tiers are side characters and filler arc villains. Alright, alright, overreaction's over with, Joker is strong but not unbeatable. The real problem with Joker is he's just too well-rounded. Once he gets a buff like Arsene on top of everything else, he goes from well-rounded to busted. There are tons of ways that you can nerf Joker. You could hit his Arsene, lowering the duration of the buff and make it take more to activate. But Arsene isn't just core to Joker's kit, it's also core to his hype. With Arsene, Joker gets one of the most potent and electrifying offenses in the game. So nerfing Joker's Arsene outright might be a little harsh and might do more damage than necessary. Joker's Arsene offense is his defining feature and the thing that helped Game 4 Leo be a thing. What's less cool and makes less sense is Joker's defense. Given Joker's strong offense, it makes sense to balance him out with a bad defense. But between his recovery, his down guns, and his counter, he's surprisingly hard to touch. Look at that down gun hitbox! You can punish that, but it's not gonna be easy. Nerfing Joker's defensive tools makes more sense because it preserves the character's unique, fun-to-watch strengths while also making his weaknesses more meaningful so that he's less stressful to fight. He's got a lot of defensive options though, so which one should Nintendo pick? Out of all his defensive options, his strongest and most frustrating are probably his down guns. When Joker uses his neutral special, literally just called gun, in the air, he can shoot in different directions. When he shoots downward, he lets out a huge hitbox with small disruptive knockback that interrupts anyone attempting to juggle him. Even worse, the slight knockback works as a great combo starter. 
That means Down Gun not only makes Joker's landing hard to punish, but also makes it high risk to even try. The downside of nerfing Gun is the gun can also be a cool offensive tool that leads to good edgeguards and combos. However, Nintendo could keep a lot of Joker's offensive pressure alive if they nerfed the size of Gun's hitbox. By making the downward aerial hitbox of Gun less wide and less long, they could make Joker's disadvantage more punishable without losing too much offensive firepower. Oh, and while we're talking about hitboxes, we should probably talk about Joker's Arsene form counter. It's also just a teensy bit too big. Honestly, Sakurai just needs to talk with whoever made these hitboxes. Nintendo could also tweak Joker's counter hitbox to bring it in line with other counters. A nerf here would make Arsene easier to edgeguard, especially with projectiles. It would also make it harder for Joker to edgeguard, but that's okay, because it would just force Joker to use any of his other great edgeguarding tools, which all look cooler anyways. With just the gun nerf, Joker would definitely stay in S tier. Joker mains would just have to deal with air dodge frame traps like the rest of the cast. With both the gun and counter nerf, Joker would probably still stay in top tier too, but there'd be a chance he'd fall lower in the list. We've talked maybe the strongest character in Ultimate. Now let's talk maybe the most annoying character in Ultimate. Palutena is a strong S-tier character that's so bread and butter that you see her succeed at every level and region of Smash. Though Palutena is popular, she does have weaknesses. Palutena struggles in scramble situations where an opponent is tech chasing her or hard pressuring her, especially when she's stuck in shield. And that's about the only area that she isn't goddess-like in. Her aerials are really good, her kill options are great, she has good range options, she can land pretty easily using platform cancels, and the list goes on. Most people don't really hate Palutena for all that. They hate her for her long-lasting multi-hit combos. Palutena has so many long-lasting multi-hit hitboxes that it feels like you're trapped in her combos for eternity. Peach may put on 60% in one combo, but at least it's over quickly. Despite all the hate, Palutena is a more balanced top tier, to the point where there's still discussion on whether or not she's a top tier. She's a strong pick that we see in top 8s all the time, but she probably doesn't need as big a nerf as Joker. If there is an area of her game that's weirdly overtuned, it's her grab game. Palutena basically has melee Marf's grab, and it's, it's pretty gross. It's really gross when you realize how much she gets off of her throws. To some degree, Palutena's good grabs make sense because her grounded options aren't that great. They're all pretty laggy and slow for a top tier. A grab makes at least something about her ground game threatening. But her grabs don't need to be this threatening. So, to make Palutena more balanced, fun to watch, and fun to play against, Nintendo should nerf her back throw. Palutena's back throw is one of the strongest in the game. It is basically the personification of yeet! It also makes Palutena super dangerous when she's cornered and gives her a frustrating play pattern. A lot of times, you'll have a good lead on a Palutena only to chase her into a corner, get caught by a grab, and back thrown into oblivion. Palutena's back throw just doesn't need to kill as early as it does. Especially when she already has good kill confirms off down throw and great raw kill moves. If Nintendo made her back throw kill a good 20-30% to 30 later, she'd feel less frustrating to fight, more fun to watch, and would probably still be top tier. Yeah, yeah, we know you want neutral air nerfs, but look, she needs that. It's like 70% of her whole shtick. Anyways, now we're on the last top tier to be nerfed, Snake. In this game, the Metal Gear rep is more than just solid, he's really darn good. Snake is the top tier a lot of players want to nerf too hard. He can be super frustrating to fight because he is so good at stifling aggression and forcing you to slow down and play a different style. But frustrating isn't the same as OP, otherwise we'd be watching DDD dittos in EVO Grand Finals. In truth, Snake isn't doing that great. Solo Snake mains haven't won anything really big since Pound 2019 and aren't even making top 8s as regularly as they used to. Most snake mains have a pocket pick too, like Salem, since the character can struggle against a lot of the fast rushdown characters in top tier. However, Snake still has a rough consensus as the best zoner in the game. He's so good because he's got great projectiles and attacks. Snake's grenade is a fantastic combo canceller and stage control tool. His landmine is great for landing and setting up traps. And his Nikita straight up invalidates some recoveries. Then he's got a ridiculously fast down air, a great dash attack, and, of course, up tilt. 
On paper, Snake looks crazy strong. The thing is, Snake has one of the worst landing states of any top or high tier. Snake's heavy weight makes him pretty easy to combo and juggle, while all his aerials aren't that great for defending himself when launched. He can use his C4 and his grenade to help out, but that still puts him in a bad spot where he could be frame trapped or in the corner. When Snake is in true disadvantage, that means no traps, no grenades out, enemy right in his face, there might as well be an exclamation point right above his opponent's head because they're about to expose him. Even though Snake tilts a lot of people, he doesn't deserve super hard nerfs. The main offenders in his toolkit are his grenade, up tilt, and Nikita. Of the three, he needs his grenades. The grenade is super annoying because it appears frame one and disrupts any combo that isn't true. But nerfing the grenades by anything more than a frame or two might actually make Snake even campier. Snake mains would know that their best tool for scramble situations is a lot less reliable. To compensate, they'd avoid the enemy even more because they really wouldn't want to get caught in a scramble situation. Instead, Snake's up tilt and Nikita are better targets. Snake's Nikita in particular is brutal in some matchups and then just not a big deal in others. For some characters, the Nikita is an infuriating counter because there isn't a ton they can do about it. Nerfing damage doesn't do much since Snake could just repeat edgeguard with the missile. The best option would be to nerf the missile's maneuverability so that it can turn less sharply or falls out of Snake's control for longer when hit. That'll feel a lot worse for Snake players, but it'll make him much more rewarding to fight for a good chunk of the cast. Then there's up tilt, the one where Snake does the split standing upright and destroys your hopes and dreams. Snake's up tilt kills crazy early, is super fast, and has a massive hitbox. It's one of the best kill moves in the game, and Snake can set it up with a down throw. It feels like a bizarrely strong move, but it makes sense on Snake because he's not a combo character. Less combos also means less kill confirms. Nerfing up tilt so that it killed later would make Snake more fun to fight, but it also might drop him a tier. If Nintendo nerfed his up tilt, then they should probably buff knockback on another move or give Snake a different kill confirm. Take a kill option, leave a kill option, essentially. Alright, that concludes our list of three characters that we think could use a few small nerfs. What do you think? Did we hit the nail on the head? Did we not go hard enough? Should we just buff everyone until everyone dies in one hit and the game becomes dive kick? Let us know in the comments, and thanks for helping us make this video with your feedback.